Welcome to 10 Minute KQL. Whether you're a technology pro looking to master the Cousteau query language, or new to the world of IT and looking to learn your first language, 10 Minute KQL is a place to level up your skills. This is the second session in the Cousteau query language beginner series. This series is intended to take you from a level with minimal technical experience to writing your first basic queries using the KQL language. These short 10 minute sessions will teach you KQL, allow you to get hands-on practice in a lab environment and provide some homework to practice after the session. In today's session, we'll talk about databases, understand why we use them and discuss the general terminology. We'll also show how to set up a free Azure Data Explorer environment. If you find value in these videos, please hit the like button. And if you wanna receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. Databases, what are they and why are they useful? Imagine you have an Excel spreadsheet. You have rows and columns and can place some data inside of each cell. As the size of the spreadsheet increases, it slows down the program and eventually the size of the data is just too large. For small data sets, it works just fine in many use cases. What if you have more than one spreadsheet? What if you have a hundred spreadsheets and each spreadsheet has its own type of information, but you need to link all the spreadsheets together to get exactly what you need? It simply isn't feasible at the scale of an organization using tools like Excel. That's where a relational database comes in handy. They're designed for larger data sets and optimization of querying, as well as merging of data from multiple tables. In a database, the single collection of information placed in rows and columns is called a table. Each table has information generally on a single topic, which should align with the name of the table. As an example, Azure Active Directory has a table for sign-in logs, so you can see successful and failed login attempts. Azure Active Directory also has an audit log table that shows administrative and management actions. The columns in the table run vertically and they're called fields. The rows run horizontally and are called records. Well, what's so special about this table? It looks a lot like an Excel spreadsheet. What if we take a second table and tie it to the first table? In essence, we've joined the two data sets and created a new table where we can define the exact results that we want. The relational database is a model that allows us to do this not only with two tables, but with many tables. It allows us to use big data at an enterprise level in a way that's not possible with a simple Excel spreadsheet. When you join these two data sets together, you generally do it on a key, which is a common field. We'll dive deeper into this concept in the intermediate series, but for now, just understand the power of the relational database lies in being able to quickly link data from multiple tables together to rapidly answer questions from a system optimized for this task. In this series, we'll show examples from different Microsoft products, such as security tools, monitoring tools, or tools like Azure Data Explorer, also referred to as ADX which allows you to consolidate and view large-scale data. There are some differences in how all these environments are set up and some of the terminology that's used between products. But at the core is the foundational concept of tables having records and fields. Another database term to be aware of is normalization. Normalization ensures the data in the database is accurate, valid, in the proper structure, and has integrity. Think of it as structuring the database in a way that removes redundant information, places data in the proper order, optimizes querying, and removes the likelihood of errors in the database. While we aren't normalizing databases ourselves, just know that a lot of thought and effort has gone into making the tables we will use in this series be orderly and as efficient as possible. This is one way to help get results back as fast as possible and reduce some headaches. Another significant factor in getting results back that are not only fast, but accurate is how you type your query. We'll talk about the most efficient ways to write queries in upcoming sessions. Different Microsoft tools and storage services have different terminology that we should know. As an example, 
Sentinel is a Microsoft security tool which collects and processes security information from many sources. Sentinel leverages a Log Analytics workspace, or a law, to collect the data. When we use KQL queries in Sentinel, it pulls from the underlying law to produce the results. Many tables can be queried from a single law. In the case of multiple cloud tenants, multiple workspaces can be queried by using the Lighthouse feature, which gives access to different laws. Azure Data Explorer, or ADX, is configured a little differently. In ADX, if you have a lot of tables that are similar, you can store them in a database. You can consider a database a collection of tables. We'll be working a lot in ADX, which is a cloud-based tool that lets you interact with data. Just like Sentinel, in ADX, a collection of rows and columns of like data is a table. A collection of common tables is a database. And a collection of like databases is contained in a cluster. Other Microsoft tools like Sentinel have collections of tables in a workspace. This change in terminology may sound confusing at first, but just understand the core concept is the table, which has rows and columns, and which are connected to other tables to gather the information we need to answer questions. These tables are stored in some type of database or container, and in different Microsoft tools, these repositories can be represented in different ways. Also, for general knowledge, when data is presented in two-dimensional tables, it's often referred to as tabular data. Throughout this KQL series, you want to be able to practice writing your KQL queries. If you have your own work environment, that's great. Working with the data that you know well can be very helpful in learning. If you decide to use your work environment for practice, be careful not to expose any company internal information when sharing query results in the channel comments. If you don't have a work environment to practice, we'll take time now to walk through the process to get a free ADX environment set up so you can access it on your personal computer. First, navigate to custo.azure.com slash public free cluster. The link will be in the video notes below if you need it. Sign in with your Microsoft account or sign up for a Microsoft account using your personal email if you don't already have one. After you authenticate, you'll be able to use the ADX user interface. To practice KQL, we'll click Query on the left-hand column. This allows us to view our data sets, type KQL queries in this section, and view the query results here. In order to view data, we must make a connection to our first data set. To do this, click Add Connection. Type in the following in order to connect to free data sets that we'll use during the beginner series. Once the connection is made, you should see the new databases populate. You can expand and contract the data sets to begin to see the hierarchies of clusters, databases, and tables. We can also see the icons that represent clusters, databases, and tables. This structure is important in ADX because when we have questions we want to answer, one of the first steps is to identify where we should look to find the answers, just as you would identify a file path to open a file on your computer. Keep in mind that in other Microsoft products that can be used to query via KQL, there may be different terms used. As a reminder, all the data that we just connected to is free. It's not sensitive in any way, and you're welcome to copy and paste both queries and results in the comments of each video as we start learning to write queries. For homework, before the next session, practice expanding each of the available clusters and databases in the free data sets. Make sure you understand if you're clicking on a cluster, a database, or a table. That's all for today's session on database fundamentals. In the next video, we'll take a look at our first KQL operators, take and where, and begin to write our first queries. If you find value in these videos, please support the channel by hitting the like button. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell. We'll see you in the next session.